Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here, and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the Chapman Lake Knives CLK-1. The information given to me is that these are made in the United States, in Bloomington, Indiana. Obviously, uh, I've become a little bit more cautious when I'm looking at knives on this channel that are claimed to be made in the United States, right? So with uh, Chapman Lake Knives, I pressed it a little bit further, asked them some very specific questions, and they were uh, very, uh, very happy to answer uh, all of my questions. Obviously, I have not toured uh, their facility or anything like that, um, but they didn't try to dodge anything. They were real straightforward, and they said you can absolutely share these exact messages with your audience. So I'm going to do that. All I can do is just give you the information that was given to me, um, but uh, it's pretty cool. So um, the only things that are not like made by the only things they they uh, outsource are um, like the bearings, which are uh, made by Boca Bearings in Boynton Beach, Florida. A lot of bees <laughs> in a row that made me laugh. Um, but uh, they were very specific. As you can see, the messages they were very specific about using. You know, even when they, it's not going to be made by them like stuff that was actually U.S. sourced. So that's pretty cool. The springs made by Lee Spring in Brooklyn, Brooklyn, New York. Um, they do grind their own blades, but the heat treat is uh, uh, done by Applied Thermal uh, in Fort Wayne, Indiana. And um, the goal, the heat tree goal is 61 HRC on the 20 CV. So this is all really great information. Um, this is really cool. Again, all I can go off is what they are telling me. Um, but what I can see here is that this is all really fantastic. And it makes me really happy because these knives, I normally don't start off with price. Anybody who's familiar with a knife hold, especially the U.S. knife hold, knows that this stuff being done small batch this way, truly, in the USA, is very expensive to do. And so it's really cool, especially, I'm going to share the quality of this here with you guys in, in a second. Um, it's really cool that they are... Right now, it's 400 bucks. It doesn't matter what level of customization you want. It's, it's just 400 bucks, <laughs> which is it's really amazing. They did tell me, they said this is a labor of love thing. Obviously, you know, as time goes on, if we want to keep it viable, you know, prices may increase. But right now, we're doing this because we're really, really passionate about it. And yeah, I mean, at $400, you would have to. <laughs> You would have to. Um, I, uh, I'm, I'm really shocked that uh, the price on this is only 400 bucks um, because we see a lot of things in the same caliber. And I'm going to tell you right now, this is absolutely in the same caliber as your Hinder knives, your Demco knives, your Chris Reeve knives, right? We're looking at the same level of precision manufacturing. And um, it's it's really, really cool to, say, uh, to see. I want to be straightforward with you guys. They did make this one for me. They even put my logo on it. But if you're familiar with my channel, you'll know that a free knife does not buy a positive review here. I've got many examples where that wasn't the case, right? I appreciate it, but I'm always going to be straightforward and tell you guys exactly what I think. And that's what I'm going to do today. I will link their website right down below so you guys can check them out. You should also follow them on Instagram. I have absolutely no affiliate program set up with them. So, you know, that's, it's just for you guys to use. Thanks so much to Chapman Lake Knives for sending us in for me to take a look at. Uh, please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. And thanks to my patrons for supporting me. Sorry for the long intro there. I just really wanted to get that information out there for you guys. Um, I think uh, if you have questions for them, I think you should message them. You should reach out to them on Instagram. They were very straightforward with me. So that's really, it's always nice to see. Overall length of the CLK-1 coming in at 8.5 inches, not a small knife for sure. 3.5 inches on the blade. It's actually, truthfully, it's about 3.65 inches on the blade because the cutting edge is actually longer than where we measure the middle of the blade. Or where I, I say we, where, where I measure the middle of the blade. Um, let's go ahead and do some size comparison. So up against the Ontario Rat Model 1 and the Ontario Rat Model 2. This knife just appears to be glowing right now. And I'll tell you, the anno that they do is really incredible. It really does look like it's glowing or, you know, <laughs> it's like it's been, like they charged it before they sent it to me. <laughs> um, I feel like when I touch it, I'm going to accidentally get superpowers. Like, <laughs> it just looks like something that fell from space. Um, but uh, anyways, yeah, you can see here it is a big knife. Uh, I mean, not an XL knife, but it's, it's definitely on the larger side. Um, how about up against the uh, Demco AD 20.5? There we go. How about up against the Spyderco PM2? And we'll do the Spyderco Para 3. There we go. 
And last but not least, how about we do the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue, and the Benchmade Bug Outs. There you go. You can see here, you know, where we are for the profile on the blade. And that's probably something that you guys have noticed right off the bat, is that, wow, the handle and blade profile are bizarre. <laughs> It's uh this is a very very different um this is a very different handle profile and the blade almost looks like it's something that doesn't go with the handle but then again I I, I kind of appreciate that it's unique because we see so much of the same things right this is a brother duo uh these two these two gentlemen um and one of them has a background in uh aerospace engineering I guess and so that is where the design work comes from um and you know handling this thing and manipulating it it's it's very clear that the person who um is uh, behind this is very experienced this is not something that was lazily slapped together which honestly you know when somebody like it's like hey there's this new u.s knife company on the scene and they're making some th some stuff yeah it's kind of what i expect I, I expect it to be a little bit sloppy Right, and it's like, well, okay, great, but just improve on your product. This doesn't. <laughs> this feels like they've been like making knives for quite a while, right? And and obviously, if not knives, then other things. Um, but uh, yeah, this is uh, every last bit of this is um, you know, it's precision. And in fact, the the word precision does not do it justice. This is really, really on point. Very, very nicely done. I would urge you to take a look at their website because it gives a good example of all the different customization options that you have. I specifically asked. They said, "What do you want us to do?" And I said, "One of my favorite." Um, things with Anno is the really bright, almost electric blue to purple that I've been seeing here. Are you capable of doing that? And they said, absolutely. And this does that. You can see here, this legitimately changes colors from blue to purple as you uh, rotate it. And I, I just really like that. I normally don't go for a lot of color on knives, but I think, hey, if you're, if you're capable of doing something wild, you know, I don't wipe this thing off. You know, I touch it all the time and it's got my fingerprints all over it. This is legitimately what this thing looks like all the time and you know if it's not your cup of tea when it comes to the anno or the overall aesthetic of the knife that's fine but what i'm saying here is that it's still something to appreciate this level of precision this level of execution is something that's really really impressive especially considering they want 400 bucks for it <laughs> i just i don't want to say it's not often i'm thinking like wow you should like you know Obviously, I want them to keep it this price for as long as they possibly can. But, you know, if the price goes up, I, it's just hard for me to – it would be hard for me to get upset. You know, I mean, it just – this this is really nice, you know. Anyways, let's not get carried away. Let's go ahead and do carry profile here. So thickness up against the Spyderco Pair 3. You can see up here, up front, it's a little bit thicker. Back here at the back, I think it – it seems like it maybe maybe it's an an illusion, but it seems like it gets well, it's an illusion. Cause back here it's wider and then it tapers in, right? But the actual thickness of the scales I think is pretty consistent throughout. So we'll go up here and then looking at the back. It's about the same. I was wondering if there's a taper, it's about the same. Um length and height up against the PM2 and para three. This guy is a little bit longer than the PM2, but in terms of height, even including the flipper tab, we are no, you know what? It's actually nowhere near it. Um, this is pretty cozy in the pocket. It's it's fairly compact, even with that flipper tab. And carrying it around a bit. Didn't do any crazy extensive cut tests. If you guys watch my channel, you know that I when I test a, a knife, I just carry it around and use it like I would any other pocket knife. And I'm a I'm a regular guy, right? I'm not a lumberjack. I'm not uh, you know somebody who manually lowers a boat anchor off of a ship. I'm not somebody who professionally survives in the jungle. Uh, and I do not tackle helicopters out of the sky with my bare hands or any of that. Um, I just walk around and live my life and sometimes cut boxes and things. That's It's pretty simple, right? This is not really a knife testing channel, more so a design reviewer. But as far as carrying this thing around and manipulating it, it's extremely easy and extremely comfortable. And um, we'll talk more about that um, here in just a bit. Uh, let's go ahead and measure blade stock thickness. Uh, blade stock thickness... I, it, I think that's 145 or so. Maybe it's maybe it's less. I don't know. No, it's way less. 122. Um, so probably about 120 to 125 thousandths uh, on the uh, on the spine there. Um, hardware check. I'm going to get out my tools as per usual. My tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools I use on this channel. Pretty sure that pivot is a T10. 
and I'm correct. T10, and uh, look at this. Look at this. Would you look at that? The freaking hand <laughs> the, handle, the handle screws and the pocket clip screw. Um, they're all T10. That's just great. That's just really great. Um, and uh, this is not a, a, a difficult, um, you know, like a, it's not a complicated construction. We have a button lock, a true plunge lock, right? And then two pieces of titanium and some standoffs and some screws. It's really pretty simple. So they made it as easy as possible for you to take apart. And I think that's really, really great. Thank you for the T10 across the board screws. Seriously, thank you. That's just, God, that makes things so much easier. Uh, really nice. Really happy about that. Wait, let's take a look at the inside of this real quick. Um, you can see that there's no internal milling for weight reduction. It does not necessarily feel like something that needs to be reduced in weight. Well, you know, the balance, I'll tell you why. It's because the balance is right where you're putting your index finger, but it is quite a ways from the pivot, right? Most of the time the flipper tab's up here. So I would be like, wow, that's quite a ways behind the pivot. I think it would be nice to have the internals of this milled out. It would feel that much more impressive, I think, especially considering it's it's not a small knife. Uh, I think bringing the balance a little bit more towards the pivot by milling out the internals would be would be nice. Um, but that being said, it's really not necessarily a massively heavy knife. At least it doesn't feel like it. I haven't actually weighed it yet. I'm going to guess it weighs about 4.75. Oh, man, I was close that time. I'm almost never right. <laughs> 4.69 ounces. Not bad for 3.65 inches of cutting edge. I, it's not perfect ratios, but it's not bad at all, right? Ritter Hogue, actually, on that note, Ritter, this is full tie, by the way. The Ritter Hogue, which is shorter and has a shorter cutting edge, only weighs a tenth of an ounce less, roughly. So, um, yeah, not bad. Not bad at all. Uh, and again, the Ritter Hogue is G10 with some steel liners. Um, okay, I think we've done everything there. Let's go ahead and talk about the meat and potatoes here. Wow, the action feels great. Uh, this is uh, a really nice button lock. Very easy. It's a shallow depress, so it's not like there's a lot of crunchy travel on the on the button itself. Nice smooth action there. The flipping action off of the flipper tab, really satisfying. There's a nice, I mean, the amount of like, it's not a detent, but the, you know, how the plunge lock is keeping the blade in the closed position, the amount of tension there allows you to really get leverage on that flipper tab. And it makes for something, here, I'll shut up for a second. It makes for a real satisfying noise and a real satisfying flip. The wild thing about this knife is absolutely the aesthetic, right? We have a super dupo, uh, dupo, a super duper aggressive Tanto that is hollow ground. This is a very thin, I want you guys to take a look at this. Something that I expect that I see so often from USA companies is uneven cutting bevels. <laughs> and it just drives me nuts. It's like, <laughs> just, just, just get it right. Like, just come on. This is perfect. This Tanto is gorgeous. They really got this thing like exactly right. And let me tell you something. This thing is freaking sharp. Um, you know, you, the flat is uh, is pretty prominent, right? I mean, we don't have a super thick stock to begin with, and it's a fairly aggressive hollow grind, but there's, you know, where they started is near the center of the blade. Um, but the actual edge is super sharp. In fact, I think, uh, that's a bad example. I, ju I got it before the video. You can't, yeah, you can, you can push cut like straight down the paper with it. That, uh, that edge is sharp enough to do that. Um, this is a sharp edge and uh, it will definitely poke and it will definitely slice. Considering they are getting the CPM 20 CV to their target is 61, which is very appropriate. I'm going to guess that their range is 60 to 62. You can see in his message that he had said, you know, we're following protocols um, for a Crucible, you know, and trying to get it right at 61. My guess is, I did not ask them this specifically, but my guess is that they, because there's always a range. My guess is their range is 60 to 62, which is what I, that's just, as a reviewer, that is, that's what I ask, right? 60 is like the beginning of acceptable. 62 is like dang optimized right 61 is yes good to go for 20 cv right so with them um you know really going at the edge geometry here the final cutting bevel is done right it is very sharp it is oh it's just like i can feel it just digging into my fingernail really wanting to bite i don't want to go too far and split my fingernail there um but yeah, it's a sharp blade. It's a very well done blade and it's not, it's handsome, right? We have a slightly different finish here on the flat than we do 
on um, this, uh, you know, the, the bevel down to the cutting bevel, and it looks really nice. Even this area out here, the secondary, right, the, tan the secondary edge is hollow ground. It's not, normally we do flat and then hollow, these are both hollow ground. <laughs> uh, yeah, very, very pointy, very, very sharp, really nice to see. I also like that they put Chapman Lake knives on the spine and not here, right? My uh, my logo is right there on the blade, and that that looks great to me. Right, but normally, obviously, you're not going to get the metal complex logo on your knife. You're going to get just a blade, and they allow you to enjoy that aesthetic without seeing their billboarding. They put it on the spine, which is really nice. I like that. So, the blade does look very narrow in contrast with the handle, though. I will say that this is absolute. What I'm about to say is is very very uh, subjective, right? In my opinion, the overall aesthetic of the knife would be improved if the height of the blade were increased. And I think, ideally, it's not necessarily down here so much, it's up here. If the blade were to come, you know, if they were to do like a, a stop, I, I, I would imagine that maybe the way that this is done, let me see where this is content. No, they have the stop pin right here, right? So maybe instead of having the titanium curl around like this and obviously there's a whole bunch of this it's just it's just some guy just some guy who's this i can't imagine how annoying this is for somebody who makes knives somebody who's an actual aerospace engineer to have some guy who's just like a pocket knife enthusiast on youtube be like can you change the thing can you change it to make it better for me like <laughs> If Chapman Lake Knives are watching this, I'm so sorry. Because I feel I feel bad. Because I know it's not as simple as like, can you just take this off and make it better? Okay. The what I'm saying here is that this the 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 um this area here would be more aesthetically pleasing if the blade, the spine of the blade came to meet the spine of the handle, right? So Normally how we have this area open, right, and the, the blade just sort of comes around and, and touches the um, the uh, stop pin there or like this, right? So this blade follows the spine of the knife and it makes the height of the blade match or it makes it more appropriate for uh, how the handle looks. Now, they might have considered that and thought, now, you know what, I'm, we're going to do something more unique and make it look like this, make it look crazy and, and a little bit different, which is honestly a good idea because everything looks exactly the same. And in a sea of things that look exactly the same, this the, the CLK-1 uh, absolutely stands out, right? But I, I, I honestly think it would only improve the aesthetic of this knife if we had the spine coming, you know, here. Like a tall, if we had a taller blade, it would make the blade look more appropriate to the handle profile. And you, you could still keep that really aggressive Tanto profile and the really unique handle shape. It would just look, in my opinion, a little bit better. If you don't like the Tanto blade, they do offer a, what it looks like on their website, a drop point blade, which is really cool, right? Some people are going to look at this and go, no, I don't want to change it at all. I think it looks really cool like that, right? It's just a, a matter of, um, you know, preference. Uh, the blade absolutely functions. It will poke, it will slice, and it will do it very, very well. Um, so, you know, it's just one of those things where I'm, I'm just judging the aesthetic and, and wanting it to be more to my liking. The, um, scales are extremely well machined. Let's see if I can get a nice close up here. And again, I'm sorry for any fingerprints that are here, but I'm trying to zoom up a little bit more. I want to let you guys see, um, every edge, uh, and all of the detail there. There's no texturing or anything, but the main point here is that all edges have been knocked down. There aren't any weird sharp edges anywhere. There's nothing that looks like an, an edge that was left, you know, like I would just leave it. Like who cares? No. I mean, everything is real nice. The pocket clip is just gorgeous. Look at that. It's really nice. Seating of the hardware is just beautiful. It's like they're off to one side or sort of just like, well, I hope it fits. We cut all the scales the same, so I hope they fit. I mean, no, they, this is uh, this is really, really nicely done, and I, I really appreciate it. Um, so, yeah, all the lines. I like that it's not just a flat scale. Obviously, they, there's a lot that they could do, but I like that they didn't just do a flat scale. Um, they, you know, added some sort of uh, like heavy scalloping in here. And it, it makes it look nice, right? I mean, this is all going to be to to you know to different you know preferences and tastes whether or not it looks good. But I like that they didn't leave it flat. Is my main point there? Um, I like uh, I kind of do like that it comes to a seam right here. I think that looks kind of cool. Um, but then again, you know, it's I think that area would have to be changed if you know they were to alter the blade to what what I would want it to be. 
Um, but uh, it does look nice, and the seam is perfect. It's, it comes together really well. You can see that this area looks a little bit wider, and that's because they cut this area out so that you'd have easier access to the button, which is cut, right? And it's when it's open, it's just slightly above the scales. So that's nice. That's where it should be. Uh, ergonomics on this thing, a little bit weird. Um, these areas are not sharp. They're just thin and you can feel it, right? Only when you are really squeezing on this thing is it gonna cause you any discomfort. This um, flipper or tr it almost looks like a trigger. This area is so long. You, you honestly could put your finger here and choke up. And honestly, doing that makes me, because it really is basically a ramp down into a razor blade. I would almost like, it, you can see here it says, uh, made in Bloomington, Indiana, USA. I would almost like this whole area to be carved out in more in the shape of like a, like a crescent so that you can, you know, put your finger in here and use it more as a choil where you feel a little bit more comfortable, a little safer behind the edge. Cause it does make me kind of want to choke up here. But the main reason is because in this position, you are such a long ways from the cutting edge, right? You're about an inch from the cutting edge. So if you're cutting straight down, which is not always the case, but if you are, there's a lot of power lost, right? So if you're really cutting into some thick cardboard or something, you're really going to have to angle it, right? As opposed to being much closer to the blade where you can really put more force into it. That's, you can, you can tell like the, the, the most serious cutting tasks I do are just really thick styrofoam and, and cardboard. So that's what I'm going to complain about is if I can't get up close to the edge. But for your normal cutting task, this will do the trick, right? Just cutting into packaging and making a quick cut here or there or whatever. It, it's going to do it, obviously. I mean, it is, it's more than, than capable of doing that. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's my, um, critiques there. Serial numbers are located back here. You can see that this is number 23. So they have not made a whole lot of these. Um, I, you know, these are not things that they can make in batches of a thousand or anything like that. So even though, you know, right now at the time of, you know, this video, it might be a, fairly easy to get your hands on them. But if you're watching this a year or two in the future, it might not be the case, right? Um, they're not, they're not Spider Co. They're not Kershaw. So they're not going to be able to pump out thousands of these. It's just not going to be the case. Um, so just more, you know, just, uh, uh, for people who are newer to the knife world. I absolutely love the pocket clip. It's a little bit stumpy right here and a couple of times it's gotten, it's not bad. It's not like I can't get it into my pocket, but I think that I, I like this, how they've done this flat and the edges are chamfered and the, the bill of it's, you know, knocked down or the tip is knocked down and there's a ramp, but I think the ramp should be steeper. Uh, and then the, the edge right, right at the nose of the clip should be a little bit more rounded so that it rises readily over a, a wider variety of pocket seam thicknesses. <laughs> what a silly thing to complain about. I like to get my knife in and out of my pocket with one hand. With just no, I don't like to, yeah, I don't like to mess with it, right? So I, that's something that I nitpick. But the clip is really nice. I like how it just sits right on top. I mean, it, I mean, it looks good for sitting right on top of the titanium. It looks good. It's just one screw and it goes through to the standoff, uh, or at least as far as I can tell. And it, it's nice, right? Smooth surface here. So uh, once that clip has gone up over the pocket seam, it'll slide in and out pretty easily. Uh, as I stated there, you can see the stop pin right here. There is some shouldering right there. Just that when I got this, it had more stick and there was a little bit of up and down play. Since then, this is dead honesty and this happens sometimes, especially with locks. Like a, if you think about how a plunge lock works, the more you use it, it should lock up more and more and more solid as it wears itself in. When I got this, it had zero side to side and the slightest hint of up and down. Now, legitimately, it has no up and down play whatsoever. It also had a medium amount of stick on the button and now has very minimal. You can listen, you can just hear it click just a little bit, just a little bit. This is pretty much par for the course for a button lock. In fact, it's actually a little bit better. So I have probably flipped this about 500 times, right? As, as all knife guys do. That's, that's what we do. We get a new knife and we flip it 500 times, right? Whether we need to or not. Um, this has broken in beautifully. I have not had to add any KPL or any, you know, 10 weight nano oil or anything to it. It's just doing exactly what I want it to do and it's locking out solid. So that's really, really nice. I like that. The other thing that I like is that the blade has remained centered. Very good. No blade play up, down, left, or right. No adjustment needed. Very good, very, very good. 
I am extremely pleased with this. And while the blade to handle ratio is a little bit weird, the amount of space between the area where your index finger is in relationship to the initial cutting edge is a little bit weird, right? And the, the overall profile of the knife is just weird, right? But that's a lot of that is just aesthetic taste. The way, I mean, it, it is still an absolutely uh, compact and capable, well-made cutting apparatus. <laughs> and if the claims that they are making, uh, you know, are true, which at the moment I don't have any reason not to believe that. But again, remember, I don't, I've not toured their facility. I don't make knives. I don't manufacture. I don't, ha I don't do that. I'm, I'm a guy who collects pocket knives and handles a lot of stuff. I root for USA manufacturing, but I'm, I'm just, I'm only capable of giving you the information that was given to me. This is extremely impressive. And as far as I can tell, it is absolutely indicative of the same type of quality that I see from other, um, you know, knife manufacturers who I know to be making knives in the United States. There are no indications here that anything is amiss, right? To me. Um, so I am very much hoping that every, all the information they gave me was accurate. Um, but yeah, if that's the case, holy crap, for 400 bucks, yeah. If you, listen, if you're into USA made knives, like, <laughs> this is really cool, man. It's just different. I guarantee you have nothing else in your collection that looks like this if you're a knife collector, right? And if you're not a knife collector and you're just looking for something that's a convenient and well-made tool to use, this will still do it, absolutely. I mean, the, the um, cutting geometry is great. The action's great. Uh, full titanium. I mean, you're really getting, you're, you're getting everything here. Uh, outside of a little bit of balance and just general quirkiness, um, there's a little bit of balancing issue, but not bad. Um, and, uh, you know, they, they didn't, they didn't give you a 3D mill backspace, but I don't necessarily need to, right? Um, pretty cool, especially considering you can get any level, right now you can get any level of uh, customization for 400 bucks. So, yeah, this is extremely recommendable. <laughs> <laughs> this is extremely recommendable. Um, it's going to go on my most recommended knives playlist for sure. Um, thank you very much, Chapman Lake Knives. I know, you know, people say, oh, well, of course he's going to say nice things because they gave him a free knife. Again, eh, if you're familiar with my content, there's no shortage of reviews I've done where I'm like, thanks for the free knife. Uh, I hate it. You know, it's just, it's not, it's, it's not enough. Uh, but when it is legitimately something that is good, right? If I get it for free, it's just a bonus. This is one of those cases. I got it for free, and it is legitimately an awesome knife. And I'm really happy to uh, I'm really happy to share this with you guys. So, this was a long one, but uh, well deserved. Very cool stuff from Chapman Lake Knives. Um, please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex if you enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you'd like to check out my other content. I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.